Cranky Geek Fall 2022 is brought to you by Google, Spearline, Crisp, and Daily. For more information, see the links in the description. Hello everyone, I'm Harsh and I work as a software developer at NVIDIA. Uh, my team is responsible for de uh, delivering high quality of service for streaming based applications. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, video FEC in WebRTC and how NVIDIA uses it to deliver a smooth um, game streaming experience on networks with packet loss. So um, to begin with a little bit about us, I think uh, most of us would be familiar with NVIDIA. We, we are a computing company and the world's largest GPU manufacturer. We have a very long line of products to offer. And the one that I work on is GeForce Now or GFN. Um, GFN is essentially a cloud-based game streaming service. Uh, we are currently supported on a very wide variety of platforms. As you can see in the snippet on the left, slide, left side, um, so we have a wide range of products from desktop to mobile. Uh, particularly for our browser-based clients, we use the WebRTC protocol for game streaming. So one of the most common use cases of WebRTC is video conferencing. You essentially stream videos at 720p resolution at 30 FPS, where the bit rates don't often exceed a few Mbps. So if you are on a bad network and you lose packets, you will see some stuttering and some freezes here and there. Um, you recover these losses by retransmitting the loss information and the stream will unfreeze. Sometimes it can get really choppy and the freezes can last for a few seconds, uh, but we all experience this every day and come to terms with it. Uh, but the constraints for game streaming are very different. Um, GFN streams at much higher resolutions that require significantly higher bit rates, often exceeding 30 Mbps. That is an entire order of magnitude higher than what we use for video conferencing. Um, so we also recently announced support for streaming at high FPS, at 120 FPS on Chromebooks. And to be able to deliver a smooth stream at that high frame rate requires ultra low latency. So when you are playing a first person shooting game, um, as you can see in the snippet here, your freezes are just not tolerable. Um, if your input is not responsive to your actions, you are going to miss your target or in the worst case, you can die. So let's try to understand where some of these stutters typically come from. So this is a classic sender receiver timeline diagram um, that demonstrates the problem with using retransmissions. So if the video receiver on the right side uh, loses a packet, it, it has to send out a negative acknowledgement request, uh, as we call it a NAC request, and wait for an entire round trip time before it can fully assemble the video frame and use it. What happens in the process is that you push out the expected arrival time of the frame. Um, so the frame duration on the left side is variable here. It, it is a function of the FPS at which you are streaming. So at 120 FPS, the sender would try and send out a fresh video frame every 8.3 milliseconds. And to be able to deliver um, the same frame rate on the receiver side only using retransmissions, you need your network RTD, uh, which is the uh, short blue line on the right side, to be significantly smaller than the frame duration, which is the uh, yellow line. But you may ask, how bad do my round trip times really get? Um, well, let's take a look at some examples here. So both the snippets on the screen right now are captured from our user facing um, network test tool that is embedded into GFN. So the one on the left, it highlights my ping time to my local San Jose server, uh, which you can see is 30 milliseconds. Something like that is totally acceptable for video conferencing, where you want to stream at say 30 FPS and your frame durations are 
as high as 33 milliseconds. Uh, but it is significantly higher than what you would want if you want to stream at 120 FPS. And it only gets bad as you move to the right because you connect to a slightly distant server. So this one is US um, Northwest. It is the server in Seattle. And the ping times are 32 milliseconds in this case. So this scenario, I would say, is more representative of the um, average GFN user because not everybody is sitting next to a GFN server. So we realized that with these configurations, Relying only on retransmissions is not going to cut it for GFN. It, it will slow us down significantly. So if we want to support streaming at high FPS, we will need to look at somewhere else. And we looked at FEC uh, to mitigate this problem. FEC is short for forward error correction. It is a variant of the erasure coding family that generates parity packets or redundant packets as they are called. Um, you can think of FEC as a proactive mechaniz mechanism for dealing with um, lost video packets. In a way, you are preventing the problem rather than curing it. So you have a bunch of parity packets now sent alongside your original video packets for protection. So if you lose a video packet, you don't need to retransmit anymore. As long as you have received the FEC packets and enough number of video packets to work with, uh, you can receive, recover the lost received uh, video packets. So in this process, you are saving a round trip time. Essentially, what that means is the frame assembly time significantly reduces with using FEC when you compare it against the case of recovery only using retransmissions. So here is an example of how a single FEC packet can help you recover the loss of a single video packet. So say the video sender wants to send out a video frame with four RTP packets, one through four. It will run all of them through an FEC encoder and generate the FEC packet by exhoring the payloads of the four packets together. Now these four RTP packets and the generated FEC packet are then sent over the network to the receiver. The receiver upon reception realizes that has received only four packets and has missed the third RTP packet. What it does now is it invokes the FEC decoder, which is again based on an XOR based mechanism, which works on the three received RTP packets that are one, two, and four and the fifth FEC packet uh, exhausts them and essentially recovers the lost RTP packet. So typically FEC is configured in rates or percentages. So in this particular example, you can see you have one FEC packet for four video packets. So the FEC rate would be 25%. But there is a catch. Um, there is an upper limit on the total available bitrate uh, that you can spend on your video stream. So if you want to use FEC, this total bitrate budget will now um, have to be shared between video and redundancy. So the snippet here tries to um, capture three different configurations of FEC percentages and how these configurations will impact the total bitrate budgeting for a stream at, let's say, more than 1080p60. So if you don't use FEC at all, which is the first configuration, 0% FEC, you can have the entire 30 Mbps uh, bitrate budget for video. But the downside of this is that uh, you risk freezing your stream here and there if there are network losses and your RTD is really high. Or you could go really conservative and use up to say 50% FEC. Uh, but this approach you want to be really careful with because what you may do with 50% FEC is you may not leave behind enough bits for video. So essentially you degrade your video quality, your video will not be as sharp anymore. Uh, and this is a problem, especially if the networks were not too lossy or the round trip times were not too high. And the counterpart of a configuration like this could be the 10% FEC, where 
you have a very low FEC percentage and it may prove extremely ineffective for uh, recovering against packet losses. So you will find yourself falling back to retransmissions more often than not if the network packet loss averages more than the configured FEC percentage. So that brings us to the next question here. Um, how much should I FEC? Do you just uh, feck it till you make it? Um, no, you, you need to be really smart about it. You need to adapt to the changing network conditions. Essentially, you don't want a temporary turbulence on the network to mislead you into constantly bombarding your network with FEC packets. The safest thing to do in these cases is just look up the packet loss reports. The receiver sends them periodically and use that as feedback um, and characterization of the network to make decisions about how much FEC percentage you require to use. So this is where the dynamic FEC controller block comes into play. It is a key control logic um, that is now going to look up a bunch of inputs and it spits out an appropriate FEC percentage to use for your current network configuration. Um, you can make use of a lot of other inputs like your networks around trip time. If maybe if that is very low, you don't need to go very aggressive with FEC or the total available bitrate budget that you may have currently to spend on FEC or even network loss patterns. If these patterns are bursty or these are constant losses or um, these are random all over the place, things like that. Uh, this control block is a little um, challenging to control in the browser because uh, there are enough APIs exposed to do so today. Moving on, um, FEC in WebRTC is called flex FEC. The prefix flex, it comes from flexible packet masks. Um, essentially, flex FEC packets are self-describing. Their headers contain a bit mask that specifies which particular video RTP sequences are being protected by this particular FEC packet. Um, so when the receiver receives the packet, um, it always knows the right combination of video packets to choose during decode and exactly which losses can be recovered. So this gives the sender a lot of flexibility to adapt the encode side behavior uh, without having to break any protocol and hence the name flex FEC. So there is a draft of the FEC RFC implemented in libwebrtc, but the feature as such was fully disabled by default. Um, this means that neither the sender nor the receiver could negotiate the flex FEC codec and use it. Uh, loss recovery at that point relied solely on retransmissions using NAC requests and PLI requests. But since we, we wanted to use this for GFN, uh, NVIDIA upstreamed a configuration change that would allow the receivers to accept flex FEC as a codec if it was offered in the SDP. The sender, however, still needs to explicitly make the offer um, or it could toggle this behavior by using a field trial that is in place. With libwebrtc's implementation, you do have the flexibility to bring in your own dynamic FEC controller. Uh, but when it comes to FEC encode, you will be constrained by the implementation um, and you cannot change it to suit your needs. If you want to have a custom implementation for flex FEC encoding, you can always use a different WebRTC implementation, um, which is exactly what we did. So let's take a look at some of the results that we got by enabling flex FEC in production for browser clients. Um, across the board, we saw improvements in the frame assembly time metric, which we use as a loose proxy for quantifying how much we have improved our shutters by. So the graph on the left side is generated by streaming against a GFN server in two different configurations, one with flex FEC disabled, the other one with flex FEC enabled. Um, with flex disabled, as you can see with the red colored plot, the average frame assembly times, they often exceed tens of milliseconds. Uh, that is not exact, exactly conducive for streaming at 120 FPS. 
However, when we run GFN with FlexFEC enabled, the average frame assembly time consistently stays below six milliseconds. So this is exactly what we needed to achieve um, stutter-free, low latency streaming at 120 FPS. Um, with Chrome version 109, I think the frame assembly time metric will be standardized and can be queried using the API. And we encourage uh, folks to use this metric for profiling their quality of service for streaming applications. Okay, last but not the least, uh, some key takeaways from our experience in using FlexFEC for WebRTC. FlexFEC essentially supplements SNAC uh, when it comes to dealing with packet loss, it cannot eliminate the need for it. So it should be thought of as the first line of defense in guarding against packet losses. It is um, ideal for use cases that require stutter free and low latency streaming, um, exactly like GFN. There is a certain bitrate cost associated with using FEC. Um, and if you don't use it correctly, you may end up negatively impacting your video quality. But the key takeaway for us is that overall, it um, definitely helps in improving the quality of service for um, real time streaming. And we encourage everybody to experience Flex FEC in action by um, using our GFN browser client and running some games. And I think that that is all I have for today. Um, thank you everybody for listening. Thanks, Harsh. Thank you to our sponsors, Google and WeberC.org, supporting web real-time communications. Spearline, guarantee a better customer experience by testing, monitoring, and benchmarking your voice and video communications. Crisp. CRISP's AI solution removes background noise and echo from meetings. Daily, build communications into any application.